Real quick, I want to ask you guys, obviously, uh, every player gets a couple days with the Stanley Cup. What were your most memorable personal days with the Stanley Cup? Well, I would say the first year um, in 97. Uh, it was it was a great weekend. I was, brought it back to my home in Toronto and uh, spent some time uh, uh, with my family and friends and had a bit of a street party. But for me, the the my favorite time was uh, I didn't tell anybody I was doing this. I just threw when you know after a, a little afternoon around the house with a bunch of kids over, and when they were all sort of dispersed, I put the car the the cup in the back of my car and I drove to where my father's buried, and I uh, I took the car the cup out of the car and uh, it strangely the cemetery was you know it was a beautiful uh, weekend afternoon. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon and. But there was nobody there, and I was a little unsure if it was going to be disrespectful if there were families there. Um, but there was no one there, so I was able to take it out and just bring it over to where he was, and I just sat there for about an hour and just reflected on all the help he had given me and tying my skates when I was a little kid and bringing me to tournaments and when when the whole house was asleep and he and I had woken up early and he was making me a little breakfast. Uh, you know, and we were leaving the house while the house was still asleep and it was dark outside to go to a morning practice or a morning game. Um, that was my favorite time sharing it with him. That's, uh, you know, to tie back to one of our guests on the show, Jerry Bruckheimer said, you know, that hockey is in that sense a family sport, you know, it brings families together. Um, and those are some of the moments that, you know, you're able to share as a kid, um, as your parents support you throughout the way. For you, Igor, I think, you know, to kind of segue, um, maybe bringing the cup back to Russia. 97, 97, uh, when the first uh, first time the standing cup was traveling outside of North America. So that's the <clears throat> first time like ever we had a chance to, uh, first of all, bring the cup to my hometown uh, where I grew up play, playing hockey. So like seeing 4,000 people at the rink where I played, my, making my first steps and the uh, and to see the Russian uh, children and the hockey players and uh, taking pictures and the touching the cup was uh, was outstanding. Then uh, taking the cup to Moscow the, to the Red Square, and then taking the cup to the nightclub uh, the next door to the KGB headquarters. You know? <laughs> 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 One is, uh, Can- Canadian businessman was uh, actually on that club and uh, it's called Hungry Duck. And uh, we uh, we uh, we show up like uh, at one o'clock in the morning. So with the NHL security guys, they were not not sure was what to expect. So, but uh, he was a big uh, Detroit fan, and he asked me if we can uh, make a little stop like for 10, 15 minutes. So we show up like at one o'clock in the morning, and like, uh, like next door to uh, to the KGB headquarters, you know. Wow. And that was uh, amazing, like to see the reception of the first time introducing the Stanley Cup uh, to the. Uh, to the Russian public and especially the kids and the future hockey players was a great experience. And did you stay for 15 minutes? <laughs> well, you know what, they were afraid like it's going to be wild because, you know, we, when, uh, when we show up at the, uh, at the club, uh, like in the back door, so the people were dancing on the, on the, on the, like, yeah. so on, on the tables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then now we see like uh, crazy Russians that like, dancing like at one o'clock in the morning and the Canadian guy on that uh, nightclub. Right. But the security were like, okay, so they get like, give you like 10, 15 minutes and then uh, I think it was, uh, and uh, then three hours later, Joe Caprizi, those guys like, from my from your office, uh, so all of them uh, were happy about that. So and then we left, and then then we took the cup to uh, I believe to the U.S. Embassy and uh, and a couple of other uh, places. See, good. guys like Igor and uh, you know uh, Fatisov, they were they were so important to our team and so important to the game of hockey. Now it's it's not unusual to see players bringing the Stanley Cup to their home countries and in Europe and in different places, but. You know, it's always very important when when a team, uh, if if you watch, when a team wins the Stanley Cup, who does the captain? So the captain gets the cup first. The yep. commissioner hands the cup to the captain, and then the captain has usually worked out with some other people on the team, or or he's just figured it out on his own. Uh, who uh, it's very important and it's symbolic. Who does the cap? Who is the first person that the captain hands the Stanley Cup to? And so there was a huge drought in Detroit. What was it? Fifty two, fifty four years, something like that. Uh, I might be wrong by a decade, but um, <laughs> we won't tell after you. that, after all that time, um, you know, Steve Eisman takes the Stanley Cup and he hands it to uh, Igor and Slava Fatisov, and the two of them skated around the ice. And um, I think it just changed for a lot of North Americans. Um, it changed their perspective on what it meant, <coughs> especially to a, a, a Russian born and bred hockey player, what it meant for a Russian player to win the Stanley Cup when you see these two guys who have won everything and how excited they were to win the Stanley Cup. 